Hello, this is a bit of an apology video. Recently, I did a live stream on how project managers can use Confluence, and I ran into a lot of technical problems with the stream. There was high latency and the audio became desynced. In my YouTube channel, um, I'm always curious where folks find this, so what I was saying didn't match up with what was happening. So, to those folks, I apologize for that experience. This video is going to be that training. I'm gonna walk through exactly what I would have done live. The only difference is I won't have live questions to answer. So again, my apologies for that experience. A number of us did get on a Zoom chat or a Zoom call and were able to continue the training. But for everyone else, I wanted to make sure you get the exact same information and learning that they did. So please stick around. I'm going to go through the entire experience of how a project manager can use Confluence. And at the end, I'll talk a little bit about my experience with that YouTube stream failing and what happened and how we adjusted. So we're going to jump right into the slides that I use for this training, and then we're going to get hands on in Confluence so you can see what it's like to be a project manager using this particular tool. All right, here we go. So one question you might have is who am I? My name is Rob and I've spent my entire career in IT. I started out on the IT help desk, literally installing monitors and computers, but I've also been a project manager, a consultant, a systems manager, and a bunch of other things. I started using Confluence specifically eight or nine years ago, and all of my training around Confluence was someone pointing at an icon and saying, there it is. So I never had any formal training or introduction to the system, which is one reason why I do courses like this, to help folks like yourself and others get ahead of me. You don't have to be frustrated and learn by doing. Hopefully this helps you just understand it a little better so you can do your job. I also have a lot of online learning courses. Check out the link in the description for those, mostly on the Udemy platform. Got things on JQL, how to set up a knowledge base, etc. And please send me questions. My email is down at the bottom there, as well as my blog, heen.tech, and this YouTube channel. Now, interaction when I do these live is usually through the YouTube chat. But for now, please use the comments down below to drop questions, or if you have ideas on other trainings or topics you might like. Also, if you subscribe and like this, it really helps me out. It lets me know what you are interested in and what other uh, topics I should cover or dig into. So please take a moment to do that. One of the first things I need to consider as a project manager is how will I structure all of my information in Confluence? And there's two main decisions. I can pick between my own space in Confluence, which is similar to like a room in a library where I can organize things and it's separate from everything else, or I can put it within another space. This would be including it with other information. Typically, I use my own space when the project is pretty big, or if there's special considerations around access controls. Spaces give me more abilities to control who can see and do things. So if it's a particularly sensitive project, or if it's a particularly big one, I tend to go with a space. Otherwise, I'll add it within another space as its own page tree, so everything's organized there. The next thing I like to consider within Confluence is how will I track my action items or my tasks? I could go into Jira and build out a Jira ticket for everything the team says they'll do. However, sometimes that's too much. I don't need a Jira ticket for every single thing, but I do want to record that Rob said he would do something. This is where the action item or task feature is great in Confluence. This lets me add to any page, anywhere on the page, an action item that can be assigned to someone, have a description, and have a due date. And even better, I can use another macro called the task report to pull all of those tasks into one spot. And if I've been smart and think through how I'll use labels, which let me sort information or search for it, I can even pull out tasks only by a certain label. For example, every task on a page marked with engineering and that's all the engineering tasks, or every page that has the kickoff label for all my kickoff tasks. So this is a great lightweight way to record what we're gonna do, and then later if I need to, I can go make it into a Jira ticket. I use Confluence quite a bit for meeting notes. I have hundreds of these, and I honestly need to be better about naming them in a pr proper way, but this is a built-in template called a blueprint that Atlassian gives us. So I am constantly using this. It's one of my favorite things to do in Confluence, and I have meeting notes on everything from project calls to one-on-ones to my own thoughts and ideas on my performance. And it gives me a great structure. It lets me record who was there, what the goal of the meeting was, what happened. And then at the bottom, it even includes spaces for action items and decisions, which I'll talk about in just a minute. That said, I'll encourage you to tailor this template if you use it or to design your own that best fits your needs. I have a whole training on templates that I'll encourage you to go check out. 
that will help you understand how to use that part of Confluence. Now there's another macro I like to use, especially when I have multiple projects called Page Properties. This is an area on a page that can be visible or hidden to someone looking at the page and includes information. For example, I could include the project owner, the main stakeholder, the objective, and the status. And this then can be pulled onto another page using the page properties report. So I can have one page that shows me updates on every project. Now this also works really well when I'm working with multiple project managers. As long as we're each updating our own pages, I now have one spot I can go to see what's going on. Now again, this doesn't replace Jira, but it gives me another way to track what's happening. I also find this very useful for stakeholders. I can give them one page with all the information they need that just automatically updates. So it saves me a bit of time and also makes my stakeholders a little bit happier. Now if you're using Confluence, you're also likely using Jira and the two are very tightly integrated. We'll see some examples of this, but I can do things like make a Jira ticket from an object on a whiteboard, or I can include a Jira ticket as an object on a whiteboard. I can make a new Jira ticket from any piece of text or information in Confluence, and I can also link Jira tickets back to a certain Confluence page. I use all of these very frequently to help ensure my team has the information they need when they need it. When someone opens up a Jira ticket, if they see there's connected Confluence pages, they know they can get more information there. Or if they open up Confluence and they realize, oh, we have a to-do item that's going to be very complex, they can make a Jira ticket right from Confluence. So this is a great way to speed up our team and help ensure they have what they need to be successful. So here's our last slide. This is the scenario we will use when we go into Confluence. We'll be a project manager looking for somewhere to collaborate. And we're going to have to consider things like our structure and how we're going to use Confluence. We're also going to have to brainstorm and think through what will this project be like? What information will we need to record? So we're going to have to do things like track meeting notes and decisions in there, along with some other things. So now that we know what our scenario is and a good idea of concepts, let's jump into Confluence and see what it looks like. So here we are in Confluence. This is Confluence Cloud Premium, but pretty much everything I show you will be available in every version of cloud, and I will call out specific things that you won't see in data center. My first decision as a project manager is, will I store this information in its own space or as part of another space? Now for this example, I'm gonna pretend I have my own space to put this in, but you might find yourself in a situation where it's part of another Confluence space. For example, a lot of the work I do with HR teams, project information will live in the HR space, and that's okay. But for now, I'm gonna click on my Spaces menu and go down to Create a Space. Now in many environments I work in, I don't have this permission. I have to go ask a Confluence administrator to add me a space. So you might have to put in an IT ticket if you don't see this. But I'm just gonna click Create a Space and I'm going to give it a name. And I'm just going to call this the Super Duper Project. Of course, I can pick any icon I want. And then I can select what type of template I should use. And you'll notice on the right, it will change slightly what happens. I'll always encourage folks to take a look at templates. But for now, I'll just click on Collaboration and hit Next. Here, I can turn on or off different features. In this example, I want to make sure whiteboards is turned on. And this is something you might not have in Data Center, but is available in Confluence Cloud, because I'm going to use that as a brainstorm. And then I'm just going to click Create the Space. And Confluence is going to make a new Confluence space for me. If you're curious to learn about things like space settings and permissions, I have other trainings about those, so I won't touch on them too much here. Instead, I'm going to focus on what do I as the project manager need. So here I have some kind of default stuff, but I've realized that first I have to brainstorm with my team what do we want to do with this project. So I'm going to click on Create and make a whiteboard. I really like physical whiteboards, but if my team isn't all in one spot, I can't do that. So a Confluence whiteboard is a great middle ground. It might not be as robust as other tools I can use for diagramming, but I do really appreciate that the whiteboard lives in Confluence and it's within the context of everything else about the project. I'll encourage you to take a look at these templates. For now, I'm just going to start with a blank one to kind of show you some basics. But here, I would invite my team to come edit the whiteboard with me. And to do that, I can just copy the link and give it to folks or send them straight to this page in Confluence. And we can then start building out our project. Maybe I have a section and I want to brainstorm what are the goals of the project. And it's to improve efficiency. This is a bit of a joke, but again, I'm coming up with things that I need the project to do. Um, make the company better and sell a great product. And my partners and my team members could come in here and add to the project goals. 
Now, of course, I want to give this a name. I'm very bad at naming things. I have a lot of untitled whiteboard number 27. So I'm going to call this Project Brainstorming just to give it a good name. Maybe I have another section where I need to plan out major milestones, and I just call this Milestones. So as I'm thinking through these, my team can also be adding additional ones. They can come in here and edit these. And again, for me, that's a big plus for Confluence. I've been in environments where I am the only one that has the ability to use the diagramming software, and then I become the bottleneck, and my team can't progress because they can't go update the diagram. They have to wait for Rob to go do it. Whereas if I'm using a Confluence whiteboard, anyone can come in and edit it. So here I have some examples of milestones my team has identified. And you'll notice if I click on them, I can create a JIRA issue. So this is one of the first connectors to JIRA that I have, one of the first integrations. And there's many others. But this will let me create a brand new JIRA ticket somewhere in JIRA on a site. Maybe I want to add it to, let's go find my test site. Now there are some limitations here. I can only really select the project, issue type, summary, and then assignee. So I don't have all the fields that I might have necessarily, but it's a great way to quickly create these tickets. Of course, I will go in later and add more information, but as I'm brainstorming or working on this, I just wanna make sure that that ticket gets created. So my team can then go into JIRA. And you'll notice that the icon has changed. This white rectangle indicates it's a JIRA ticket. So as I brainstorm or add more of these, I could also click on this button down here and import existing things from JIRA. Maybe there's already tickets that my team has created from some planning process, and I can just pull them right in. So this for me is great as a project manager. I can both create tickets from here or also pull in other ones and then connect them. I can show a hierarchy visually by clicking and dragging. You'll see a little line or show how it connects to other milestones. I can also include other information. For example, links to Confluence pages or other tools in my whiteboards. So for me, this is a great way to kind of plan out and figure out what I want to do in the project. So for this example, let's pretend I'm done brainstorming and now I'm in the kickoff call. I've got my team together and I need to keep track of what's happening and what decisions and what action items are getting created on the team. So to do that, I'm just going to go back to my super duper project space. Maybe I open this up on the day of the kickoff call and I'm gonna make a new page. And I want this page to have meeting notes. And we'll notice right away down at the bottom of this page, there's this little bar, and this includes some templates and some other macros. Now, it just so happens that meeting notes shows up. I believe that this is adjusted based on what I'm using, but I really like the meeting notes template. If I want other templates, however, I can click on all templates, and we'll see this sidebar. I won't dig too much into all the templates and how to manage them. I have a whole training just on that. But if you scroll down, you'll see things like a project plan and you can view it and preview what it might look like. So I'll encourage you take a look at these templates. There are some great things that come just out of the box. There's 160 of them, I think, maybe more these days, 143, there we go. Um, but you can search them by typing in the word project just to see what exists and then make a selection for what works for you. And again, I'll encourage you to adjust the templates as you go. But for now, I'm just going to insert the meeting notes template because it's there. It looks interesting. I'm going to give it a name, super duper kickoff. Again, whatever's most appropriate. And I'm going to immediately tag participants. So this is called at mentioning. It works very similar to other systems. Just do the at symbol and just start adding names. Now, sometimes for bigger meetings, I'll do this ahead of time. If I know the kickoff call is Monday, I'll set this up and include all the participants and adjust it the day of. But this helps make it easier for me to be in that meeting. As people are talking, I'll just start taking notes and writing things down. I'll include the goals of the meeting and make sure people know about this. Now, this is a, another reminder to modify your templates. I don't personally record the time something happened. I don't need to do that, but some folks do and that's okay. Same thing for presenter. I tend to just do item and notes. So I might call this, you know, introductions. Rob introduced everybody. And I'll just keep going. And I'll have this up on one screen or on my laptop as the meeting's going and taking notes. 
Now, there might be action items that pop up. Maybe the person presenting says, Rob is going to buy the new servers for the team. And here I'm making up examples, but I want to record that action item. I might not have time to jump into Jira and make a new ticket, or it might be something small enough that I don't think it needs a Jira ticket, but I still want to track it. So that's where action items come in. These don't have to live at the bottom of the page. However, this section shows up on that meeting notes template just at the bottom. So for this example, I'll add them here. But I'll just click on the line, and then I can at mention someone, maybe Rob, and I'll say buy the servers. And then I'll do a double forward slash to add a date. And maybe I'll say he has to do this by the 27th. And then I can enter and add another one. And maybe Andrew has to write the JavaScript code. Again, I'm making up some kind of bad examples here. Write the code. And that has to happen by maybe the 4th of October. And then I'll hit enter and I can keep adding these. Now I can also add action items anywhere on the page. It doesn't have to be in the action item section. One way I can do this is I can click on this checkbox icon up in my toolbar and that will insert a new action item. So sometimes I'll just click on that and quickly add a new one. The other way I can do it, and I usually use this because I'm typing and I don't want to move the mouse too much, an open bracket and a close bracket and then hit space will also add an action item. So I don't only have to put them at the bottom. Sometimes when I'm typing, I'll just put them wherever to make sure I record that action item. Now you might be saying, Rob, that's great. I have all these action items. Where do I see them? Or how do other people see them? If anyone clicks on their Confluence homepage, which is click on the Confluence icon at the top, you'll come back here and there's actually a tasks menu. I didn't know about this for a while because I tend to not use the Confluence homepage. I tend to just go where I need to go, but I've started coming back here and just clicking on tasks. And this will show me every task that I've created. Now you'll notice the one that I just made isn't here yet, and that's because I haven't published the page. So let me go back and quickly hit publish. And now this page has been published, I'll refresh my tasks. And I can see that brand new one for the super duper kickoff right here. So right from here, I can be assigning tasks to my team and they can come to their tasks menu and click off things as they complete them. And this signals to the group, Robert bought the servers. I also can click on created by me, the next tab over and see every task that I've created. So I can follow up to see if Andrew's actually doing the thing. And it doesn't look like Andrew has. So maybe I'll go check in with him to see what's going on. Coming back to my meeting notes, Let's pretend I'm still in that meeting and decisions are being made about how we should move forward or what we should do. And I wanna record those. Usually I'll just type these out on the page and then later I'll have to go dig around Confluence to find them. This can be challenging because I've been in situations where someone demands to know why we decided something and it takes a lot of effort to go figure out why. Confluence has this great feature just called decisions where we can add a decision. Maybe we make a decision to use JavaScript. For whatever reason. And I'll want to include that in the decision because later I can pull these decisions out and put them somewhere and show people, here's every decision we made and why. So in this template, it shows up at the bottom, but I can just hit enter and then I can add a new decision. Again, I'm making up examples here, but I also don't have to put these decisions at the bottom in this decision section. I can put them anywhere I need to in my notes by doing a forward slash and the word decision. So sometimes if the meeting's going very fast and there's lots of decisions, I'll just hit forward slash and decision. And then when I publish or update the page, that decision gets saved. So your next question is gonna be, great, where do those decisions go? It doesn't help me if I have to go find this page. So to show you that, I'm gonna make a new page just called Project Decisions. I'm gonna go back to the top of SuperDuper Project and hit Create and make a page. And I'm gonna call this SuperDuper Decisions. And I'm gonna add another macro. I'm gonna hit that forward slash. I'm gonna type in Decision and look for Decision Report. This looks within the space it's in and just grabs every decision. And I can see the page it is on and I can see the decisions that were made. And even better if I click edit, 
I have some more options. I can sort them. I can choose to only show maybe just the decision column, but I can also filter them. Maybe as I'm writing down meeting notes, I put a label on that meeting called engineering or called kickoff call or something else. And then I can say, you know what? I only want to see engineering related decisions. Now, when I refresh this, those decisions will disappear because I haven't labeled that page engineering. So I'm going to go and do that. And this is another thing as a project manager I like to consider. I'm going to publish this page and that's what labels will I use? I typically have only a few labels per project, maybe the name of the project and maybe the team that's working on it or something else. But this lets me then very easily sort information. If I go back to super duper kickoff and scroll to the bottom, there's an add labels button. Or if I'm viewing the page, I can hit L on my keyboard and I can add a new label. So I want to add the engineering label because this meeting related to engineering. And maybe I add a kickoff label because it was the kickoff call. Again, the exact labels I pick will differ based on my needs. But now if I go back to super duper decisions and I refresh and wait a minute, it's going to realize, hey, there is a decisions page about engineering. Pull that in. As a project manager, this is really useful because now I can split my decisions based on team. My engineering team is making some decisions, but the marketing team doesn't care about that. They care about the marketing decisions. So maybe I have engineering and marketing decisions or maybe some other way of spicing them up. And even better, I can do the same thing for my action items. I don't have to go back to my Confluence homepage. I can create a new page within SuperDuper Project. And maybe I call this SuperDuper Action Items. And I add a forward slash and I type in, oops, it's called the task report. And this lets me pull in tasks. I get to pick which space it's pulling in tasks from, in this case, SuperDuper Report. And you can see right here, Andrew has one. Now it's not showing the other one because it's only showing incomplete tasks right now. So if I wanna see complete ones, I can see them right here. I have some other options. I can show only specific labels, maybe just action items assigned to engineering, or maybe just certain individuals. Maybe there's three people who I expect to be on the ball about certain things, so I put their names in. The point is I can very easily pull out every action item in the space that relates to this project and show them here for the team to see. Now you might be telling me, Rob, that's great. We can do it in Confluence, but I really use Jira to track my work. Can I turn a task or an action item into a Jira ticket? And the answer is not really. However, if I select text in Confluence, and this could be text in an action item, in a decision, anywhere else, I can click create issue. And this will let me very quickly create a brand new issue. Now in this particular example, I'm doing it in a table. So it's not able to stick it on the page, but I can still make a Jira ticket right from here. And again, this is where as a project manager, sometimes I don't have time to go make a new Jira ticket and fill out every single field and make it perfect. So I just slam it an action item. And then later I come back and I convert some of those to Jira tickets. So right from here, I can start making Jira tickets for my team to help speed up their process, to help shorten the distance between them being asked to do something and them doing something. So very quickly, if I pop over into Jira, I'm gonna go find that ticket and I'm going to quickly switch to the persona of the developer, the person who is expected to do work. And I'm going to look for my test space. And here we can see a bunch of tickets. And here I have Andrew DeBall write the code. And this is the exact text I had selected on that Confluence page. Now, one thing to be aware of is this doesn't automatically link it back to Confluence. So when I think of Confluence as a project manager, it both pushes things out into Jira, but it can also pull things back. And within Jira, I can also link out to Confluence. So if I just click on this little drop down for link issue, I can link it to Confluence. And I can pick a specific space. I want to look for super duper. And this is called super duper action items. And I can click link. And now directly on my Jira ticket, my developer, my engineer, my expert can click on this and see that page. And this allows me to remove obstacles for their work. 
Again, systems exist to help make our lives easier. No one should have to come ask me as the project manager, hey Rob, where are those action items I was looking for? It should just be right there on their screen so they can go find it. And this is a great way to do that. So I can link Jira to Confluence and Confluence to Jira to make it very easy for folks to find information. All right, the next thing I'm gonna show you is something called page properties. So I'm gonna go back to, maybe I need, oh, here we go, perfect. I have a project plan. I'm gonna go and edit this project plan. And let's pretend that my company really cares about all of these pieces of information about the project. The exact information that your team needs will of course differ. But for this example, let's pretend these are all the things that my senior stakeholders need to know about every project. I'm gonna add a forward slash and I'm just gonna type in page properties. Now there's nothing in here right now. So I'm just gonna cut this and paste it straight in there. Now you'll notice that there's a column with information and then some information. So maybe the driver of this is Rob, the approver is Andrew. I don't have any contributors right now. I have a stakeholder who is Sarah. My objective is be super. Again, I'm just kind of making up information. I'll throw in some kind of date uh, and then I'll give it a status, maybe not started. Now I will use page properties on many pages, but typically it's gonna be the project plan or the status page for a project. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I can then pull that page properties up into a single report to show every page property across a space. So for this example, I'm gonna make another page and I'm just gonna call it maybe project statuses or project high level. And in it, for this example, I'm just gonna include the page properties report. And right away, information pops up. And for me, as a project manager, this is incredibly useful. I didn't have to do anything except add this macro and it's already telling me, hey, there's some things going on. Now, for this example, these are a bit silly. I have a template for decision documentation and a template for my project plan. However, if I had multiple projects that I'm managing, I could quickly pull this together and then just update the individual pages to see their status or other information. And then I can give this to my stakeholders so they can quickly see who's approving this thing, what's the impact, what's the status, where do I, as the stakeholder, have to do something. So this frees up me as the project manager. I don't have to dig around and look in multiple places for context or information. And even better, if I edit this macro, I can filter just by label. Maybe I have 10 projects I'm working on, but only three of them are engineering related. Maybe this report only shows those engineering projects, or maybe it only shows the ones that impact our customers or anything else. I do have some more filters I can use. So I'll encourage you to take a look at these and a couple more options. But the point of this page properties is it allows me to pull in high level information about a project from multiple places. I can even do this across spaces. So if I, as a project manager, have project information in multiple Confluent spaces, I could pull it into one single page to see the status across everything. Or maybe I'm managing other project managers and they're each responsible for a few projects here or there. I could pull all that into one spot. Again, this does not replace Jira, but it extends my toolkit. If I don't need to use Jira for this or if Jira is too hard to set up or too much stuff, I can use Confluence to manage a lot of this information, which as a project manager is a great option to have. So those are some tips on how I as a project manager use Confluence in some ways that you as a project manager can use it. I'm really curious to see what you think about that. Please use the comments to drop in a comment. Again, usually I do this live, so there's chat and it takes some time to go back and forth and I get questions. So please drop them in the comments. And also I wanna thank everyone who stuck around for that live stream that went terribly wrong uh, and joined me in Zoom. I had 50 folks jump in and keep learning. And that to me was incredible because for me, it doesn't matter if one person or a thousand people see this and learn from it. As long as one person gets something, I am thrilled. And that is that makes me more than happy. And I was incredibly excited to see so many people join me. So as a quick explanation about what happened, it turns out my home network is doing very poorly. Um, I blamed YouTube in the live stream. It's not necessarily YouTube's fault. Um, but 
it was a network connectivity issue between my computer, what I stream on, and the internet. So I've taken some steps to fix that, and hopefully this will not be a problem again. But I want to thank everyone for watching this video, for learning a little bit about Confluence with me, um, and just for coming back. I really appreciate it. So if you have a minute, drop in a comment, subscribe and like, but come back for more. Again, new videos all the time, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you in another one of these again soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.